Aloha, welcome back to this week's video. So this is part two of making the daggers. Although one of them I decided is gonna be a spear. <laughs> so in the last video, I finished up shaping the first piece. And in this one, I'm going to be finishing up with these next two pieces here. Um, if you remember, or if you watched the last video, I couldn't quite sh shape these two other pieces. So these are the marlin bills. I couldn't attach them to the coal wood base or start to shape them because I had some issues with the glue up. So if you want to see that, you can go ahead and check out part one and you can see what happened there. But now they're fully set and they're ready to begin shaping. So the first step is just going to be marking in the tongue for the tongue and groove joint and cutting those out. Once I have those marked in, I can go ahead and prep the handle portion of it. Now, neither of these pieces of coal wood are square, and so I have to square them up just a little bit. It's not strictly necessary, but the more out of square the piece is, the little bit more of a pain it is to shape, and it tends to take a little bit longer because I'll end up having too much material to remove. So it saves quite a bit of time just to square it up just a little bit and get it a little bit closer to the end shape before I start actually shaping with the disc grinder and sanding discs. Uh, the first step though is going to be putting in uh, the joint, the tongue and groove joint here. Now on this first piece here you'll notice that it has a super long joint, an elongated joint. The reason why I did that is this was kind of just for test trial, trial and error. I wanted to see the way it, it would look, but I, for one of these daggers I wanted to uh, try doing a non-lashed joint. So it's an exposed joint and so I made the tongue and groove joint long enough that I can thread three pegs or cross pins into the piece and so a combination of a really tight uh, fitting connection here as well as the cross pegs it should hold in really tight and so that's what, again, that's what I'm trying here. If it doesn't end up looking good then I'll go ahead and just lash the whole thing and it'll be a elongated lash but that's not too bad of a, a problem. So the first step here is going to be gluing this in. Normally I wrap uh, tape, painter's tape around the joint before I glue it in but because this is such a tight fit it actually only fits in from the side. Um, it's not a perfectly square fitting there and so I couldn't tape it first and so I needed to put the glue into place, slide it in, and then I could tape it after. The tape just helps keep the epoxy from running out. And then the epoxy that I'm using is just a 15 minute epoxy mixed with coal wood shavings that actually came from these pieces. Uh, and that just helps hold it in place so that when I go to pig it, everything is solid. And then on this next piece here, um, this is not as tight, but I'm not as worried. And you'll notice that I'm taping it right away. Um, the reason why is because I'm able to just slide it in from the top. Now it's not as uh, tight of a fit as the other one and I'm not as concerned because the epoxy is going to fill all of that in and make those joints look a lot better. So I let that sit overnight. It is just a 15 minute epoxy but I prefer to let it sit 24 hours just so that it hardens up and it makes it a lot easier to sand and shape without gumming up my uh, sanding discs or my uh, the grinding unit there. Um, I do have to be careful though with this one. So that first one I can just eye shot it and I get center hole. But because I'm going to put in three pegs here, I needed to make sure to put a center line and then um, tap pre tapping in some small holes here just so I can make sure the drill doesn't walk, doesn't move left or right as I go to drill it in. And then I'm just being extremely careful to have a perfectly vertical drill. Obviously, if I had a drill press, that would make that a lot easier. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll get one. Uh, who knows? <laughs> so I'm just using quarter inch uh, dowels here as my pegs, and then they're long grain. And so it'll be pretty tough, actually. Um, and there's not a whole lot of strain or, or stress that's going to be levered against them. And so they work out nice. And then I'm using epoxy again. Uh, the reason why I'm using epoxy for the pegs, if you watched my previous videos for the same reason, the core of those marlin bills is now filled with epoxy and so epoxy glue with the pegs is going to adhere to that epoxy core way better than if I used uh, say like a wood glue. The wood glue would adhere really nice to the outer wood edges but then it wouldn't really adhere to that core and that's really what I wanted it to do. 
and the epoxy will adhere to both the wood and the epoxy core so just a better setup and while I let those sit I went ahead and finished up this small spear so a short spear in Hawaiian is ihe now this is a short short spear <laughs> usually a short spear is around four to six feet long around that range this thing's like I don't know three feet maybe a little bit shorter <laughs> But it's a little bit too long for a dagger pahoa and so i thought it looked cool just as a short spear and uh, the oil up on this was absolutely gorgeous you can see the curl uh, on the coal wood on some of those sections is just beautiful and then i usually oil up the bill as well so the bill has been filled with the epoxy and then i oil it and then i coat the whole thing and that just helps seal everything so that it doesn't rot, it doesn't absorb uh, any moisture, and it just keeps it nice and solid for a long time. And the balance on this actually turned out to be really quite perfect. It's right towards the center there. Um, but man, this is a beautiful piece. It's gonna look really good once I lash it, and I'll probably end up lashing in feathers to this as well. I'm not going to be adding any uh, shark teeth to any of the bills for these three. They're just going to be plain bills. So while that one sits, I can get back to these other two and start shaping on them. The shaping is pretty simple, um, so I don't spend too much time on it. The primary thing here is just making sure that I'm keeping them true, so they're nice and straight going from the coal wood handles to the marlin bills. Uh, I wanna make sure that it's mostly cylindrical, the bodies are, they're a little bit oval just because of the shape of the bill is kind of ovalish and so that makes it so the wood kind of has that same look to it but so I don't spend too much time uh, shaping just because it's a fairly simple design and then I spent quite a lot of time sanding I skipped most of that out I, I just cut it out it's not as interesting to look at <laughs> it's just a lot of back and forth uh, starting with 120 grit and then making my way up to 320 grit uh, I'm not going to be sanding them past 320 uh, it's not really needed for these pieces uh, plus the 320 if you sand well it just looks really nice and so then now that I have these two mostly finished I did notice as I was getting into those finer grits some cracks and holes in the bill as well as in some of the epoxy joints and so I'm just using some CA glue with the accelerant is the, that spray so just it hardens it up right away and that way I can keep sanding on it and getting it ready for uh, oiling the oil that I use on these is all the same. It's a tongue oil. I really like the tongue oil. It's not really a stain. It's really just a, a, a nice oil. It, it does darken lighter koa a little bit more. So like that lighter grain will get a little bit darker. Um, for that reason, some people don't like it. But I really love the way that it brings out just the natural grain of the koa wood. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I don't stain any of my pieces. Uh, I just use the tongue, tongue oil because um, I really love the look of natural grain and and the way that the, the coal with the shimmer the curl when it has it which looks absolutely gorgeous the wood on that piece was just stunning it had a mixture of curl had a mixture of some figure looked like a little bit of spalting too that dark line is hard to tell and then this piece here man that joint looked awesome uh, the coal wood itself is also very beautiful has a nice curl on one of the edges and a, a nice shimmer but that joint just looks awesome. I love the way that that turned out. So I am definitely gonna be leaving that joint exposed. I, I'm not gonna be lashing it at all. So this is so this piece here is pretty much done. Uh, I just have a final coat to put on it. Um, so before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish the ihe, the short spear. Here's just a final look at these oiled pieces. Um, they're not quite done yet, but they're pretty close. So the feathers that I put on, um, I really like these feathers here. These are just rooster feathers, nothing special about them, but they're uh, conjoined together. If they weren't, then I it just takes a lot longer to do this, my next step. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually gluing the feathers into place using a little bit of super glue. Um, this would be similar to like in Native American cultures where they would use like a pitch and feathers would be adhered to like the arrow with a pitch and then lashed with like a sinew or string. So I'm same concept, it's just instead of pitch, I'm using some super glue. And then from here, I lash the feathers into place. So the lashing is the primary holding method. And because the marlin bill tapers, I put a notch on one edge of the marlin bill. And I'm gonna be doing this to both marlin bills that I lash. And that's gonna keep 
the lashing from sliding down the marlin bill. Otherwise, because it tapers and I'm lashing towards the thicker end, it's going to continually want to slide down the bill. And so that notch prevents it from doing that. And this is a very basic lash. It's really just a wrap. And then I knot it on one end and I pull that knot through, which tightens the whole thing into place. And so that's what you see me doing here is I'm tying in that knot and that loop that uh, loop goes from the underneath of that lash and then I just pull it tight. You do have to be careful. Um, I have had it where I've lashed it so tight that the, the amount of uh, friction, I can't pull the loop tight um, and I've, I've broken the, the cordage. So that there's kind of a balance there as to how tight you can make it. Uh, but this piece for it worked out really well. I was very pleased with the way that it looked. And so the last step here is just uh, cutting off like a pigtail and then I tuck that pigtail in underneath the lashing um, and that makes a, a nice finished look to the whole piece and it's the same thing on, on the bottom here I, I didn't record lashing the other piece because it's the exact same steps minus the feathers and that's kind of boring so, <laughs> so I figured I would just skip that and jump straight to the finished pieces so here is the Simplistic uh, paho or dagger is just a marlin bill jointed to a coal wood handle with a simple lash. Here is the exposed jointed paho, so a marlin bill with a three peg and a tongue and groove joint to a coal wood handle. It's absolutely beautiful, gorgeous piece. And then the final piece is this ihe or short spear, very short spear. <laughs> It does have a larger bill and obviously a longer handle, but man does that look absolutely gorgeous. And then I will get some shots in the light. It's kind of bright uh, the last couple of days, so I didn't really have a good opportunity to get some uh, shots without it kind of flaring out, but uh, I'll do my best. And in the natural light, you can see more of the curl on the coal wood, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love the way that these pieces turned out. <laughs> Uh, I will be posting these three uh, pieces for sale on my Instagram. So if you're interested, go ahead and check out my Instagram. I'll probably be posting them either today, um, this is the 7th, or I'll be posting it uh, tomorrow. Uh, but this was a ton of fun. I really enjoyed making these pieces. They're very simple, but the Marlin Bills with the coal wedge just looks absolutely gorgeous. And they're absolutely devastating. Uh, I didn't test it on Ballistic Shell just because you just stab with them. <laughs> so, I mean, stabbing with the ballistic shell just isn't as interesting as, as cuts and slashes, but uh, the watermelon definitely <laughs> felt it. <laughs> Mahalo plenty for everyone that watches my videos. Uh, I really appreciate it. I really like enjoy the comments. If you have any suggestions, uh, let me know uh, below. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Mahalo plenty. Aloha.